guys, welcome to episode 7 of season 7 here at Sunderland. We start with a home game against Watford. We have all the W's today. Watford, West Ham and Wolves. There is an extra game in there against Nottingham Forest, which we'll also be playing. The game that we'll simulate today with this one at the weekend against West Ham. Question is, will we come away with all W's from the games themselves as well? Wolves, West Ham and Watford all sit relatively close to each other in the league. 12th, 13th and 15th. Wolves and Watford on 19 points, West Ham on 17 and Forest are down in 19th in the league on just 10 points. So I'd like to think, I'd like to think we should be getting at least 10 points today, which would do us the world of good when it comes to chasing down Manchester United at the top of the table. We'll be heading into the January transfer window in the next episode on Friday. As you see this, there will have not been an episode yesterday, starting as of Monday, then going at video every two days, Monday, Wednesday, today, Friday and Sunday. I'm away out of the country uh, from uh, Thursday until Sunday, so needed to make sure I staggered out the content to ensure you guys got regular uh, content and it wasn't just like a video every day and then a gap of like four or five days. Um, we're at the FIFA 20 capture event where we'll be getting some ultimate team footage. So uh, there might be some ultimate team on the channel coming over the next few days once they get back after the weekend. Certainly there'll be some, uh, some recorded footage played back on stream. Link in the description down below to my mix channel if you want to watch there. Of course, we've still got a FIFA 19 career mode going on stream as well with Aston Villa. But for now, we're going to concentrate on this save. And next up in this save is a home game against Watford. Do drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss out on any uh, more FIFA 19 content or, of course, FIFA 20 when it comes. But for now, Watford at home up first. Simon in goal for Watford. Sosa, Nelson, Kim Min Jae and Taylor at the back. In the midfield, Luca Bacchio, Zaracho, Luis and Hughes. And then up top, Fernandez and Peñaranda. A deep 4-4-2 with two CDMs as opposed to out-and-out -out centre mids. Not too dissimilar formation from the one that we're playing. Although, of course, George Harrison sat slightly deeper as the second striker. So hopefully the formations don't cancel each other out and we'll still be able to find some space in the attacking areas to cause them some problems. We could do exactly that right at the very beginning of the game if it weren't for great defensive work from Nelson. Superb physicality there. Alexis will win that. Oh, I just couldn't resist the temptation to hit that first time. That could have looped into the, the net had there not been a defender in front of me. Slide there. Nice one, Nicholas. Excellent tackle. George Harrison around the corner. Go for the 1-2. It's not quite worked, but Rafinha will pick up the loose ball. Harrison's turned brilliantly. He's going all on his own here. George Harrison will turn and look for a, a teammate. McAllister through the gap to Chalov. Good save from Ine Simon to deny us an early 1-0 lead. Can George Harrison win this header? Own goal, apparently. It's gone down as, but I'm pretty sure that should be George Harrison's goal himself. Man on the line heading it further into the net. But I'm pretty sure that that was already on its way in. Yeah, definitely already on its way in. It's harsh on the defender to get given an own goal there. And harsh on Harrison not to award him the goal as well. Actually, in a great vein of goal-scoring form now, George Harrison. Delighted with his performances. Oh, and he's intercepted it there as well. Watford really not starting well here. Sosa down the right-hand side. Attacking well. Fernandi couldn't deal with the turn. Sula heads away. Drops to Rafinha. I'll just lift that to hopefully ensure that we get there. Tell of Will. Harrison's done well. And he'll squeeze it to Rafinha. And now the opportunity is on to perhaps grab an early second goal as well. I see the man on the edge of the box. I'll try and pull it back. It's not worked. Pull it back again. Alexis deflected. And oh! Well, that's the fortuitous second. Oh, the keeper tried his best there to keep that out as the deflection was taking it over him. He's done wonderfully well. But unfortunately for him, Jack Clark is right there. To just turn home into a very empty net. The keeper's still got his face in the ground. <laughs> very, very unfortunate for the goalkeeper there. Sunderland 2, Watford 0 inside 20 minutes. We're aiming for at least three, if not four W's today. And we're starting off with what looks like is going to be a W against a W in game number one. Bacchio. Out wide there to Hughes quickly to Penyaranda. Nice little one-two. Looking for support from the wing back. This is a good move from Watford, although Will Hughes is going backwards still. 
Yeah. Yeah, Luis to back to Will Hughes. Blocks by Juan Bissaka. It'll be a throw. Not going to take it quickly, but they will find a teammate with it. Taylor into Luis. Nice Not really going anywhere, Watford. When the ball does eventually come in, it's comfortable for Longley to clear. Harrison wins that header well. Shalov just makes sure they don't win possession back there. We'll work it around really nicely, he says, as he gives possession away. Luca Bacchio in the midfield. Back here to Miguel Luis. Fall to Will Hughes. Into Carlos Fernandez, who's turned well, strikes really well. Barely any backlift there. And Watford have one back just before the half hour. That was a great strike. Turn, oh, just not just half, half hour. I saw the nine. I thought it was 29. It's not. It's 39. Turns, spins, and then just with barely any backlift, gets so much power on it. The accuracy as well. Absolutely superb. A little drag back. And then a side footed effort that flies in the back of the net. Oh, questions. Of whether the keeper actually got anywhere near that. It looked almost as if he went through his arm from that replay angle. Watford back in it at 2-1. Maybe this isn't going to be as straightforward as we thought. Carlos Fernandez. What's that back nicely there to Miguel Luis. And Yoranda. Up to Will Hughes. Looked for a moment like he'd left the ball behind. Oh, you've not given a pen for that. In the third minute of plus two added on. The referee gives a penalty for something that was not a foul. Fernandez steps in, clearly wins the ball. Carlos Fernandez goes down to ground and the referee points to the spot. To pull it level at half time, Carlos Fernandez wastes the opportunity. Very, very cheeky penalty that did not pay off. We keep our 2 1 lead. Carlos Fernandez <coughs> looking to make up for that error in judgment. And for the naughty penalty, Penenka, and it really didn't pay off. Oof, that nearly paid off for Penyaranda, though. Not far wide at all. Had the keeper at full stretch trying to claw towards the top corner. Thankfully, he didn't need to get anything on it because it went wide, but that had me worried for sure. Especially after the way that he sprung at full stretch for the actual goal that went in and seemed to get almost to it, but still unable to reach his hand towards the ball. We've got West Ham coming up next. That one will be the one simulated game of the episode. In there to Zaraccio, the back to Luca Bacchio. Possibly come in, but has it. Carlos Fernandez offense. delivers a looping ball that Lunin comes to punch. Can Harrison get to that first? He can't. Ten minutes into the second half, Watford clearly starting with positive and attacking intentions to try and get themselves back in this game. I thought after 20 minutes, it's going to be a bit of a walk over here. It certainly has not turned out to be that way for the remainder of the game. At least the remainder of the game so far. The first 20 minutes were ours. The next 30 have definitely been theirs. But hopefully we can settle on the ball for a little while, I was going to say. Rafinha will win that back. And we'll keep possession right. Hopefully now we can settle on the ball for a little while. Jack Clark was who that pass was intended for. Getting a little bit hassled, a little bit flustered and a little bit rushed in my possession play. And Zaracho's just running around everybody. And Will Hughes with a really dangerous ball in that Longley has to stretch to get rid of. Oh, if that goes in. Half an hour to play, still 2-1. Alan Mendy. Forward there to Yuri Timon's space for Jack Clark to run into and exploit here. Got support on the inside as well. They saw Harrison looking for Chalov. Arriving here is Alexis, but Kim Min Jae gets a vital touch on it. And they'll build on the counter-attack. And quickly too, Ulare squeezes that to Will Hughes under pressure from man in the middle. Zaratso out wide here to Luca Bacchio. Has been all Watford in this second half and continues to be so with 20 minutes to go. Sosa, good ball in. And to rely on our new high-rated defensive signings to keep them out here. Niklas Sula and uh, Longley at centre-back and Lunin in goal being called upon multiple times throughout the course of this game. But so far, only the once have they gotten past, even with something from the penalty spot being saved. Lare out there to Miguel Luis. I'm going to have to make changes soon, but Sula again in the way. And Lou, heavy touch from the goalkeeper there. Very nearly cost me with the defender, with the attacker, sorry, closing him down. Miguel Luis. No, says Alexis Macalis. That Rafinha breaking into the space. George Harrison is... Not necessarily through, but certainly in a good position. And trying to keep the ball, but just can't. Watford have been so good in this second half. Just thankfully, we've been able to keep them out. We'll bring Juan Foyth on for Sula as well. And we'll bring, we'll bring Gooch on to go on out wide. And see if we can't get ourselves a third to kill the game off whilst remaining solid at the back and not conceding a second. 
Wait and see how that plan goes. Nine minutes to go now. Zarato bursting past me yet again. He's been so good at that all game long. And still going here. Vital interception by Juan Bissaka. Luka Bakio's shot is held well by Lunin. Oh, I didn't want him to bowl that out on the floor, but kept possession. Alexis forward there to Chaloff. A turn. Finds George Harrison. Space to break into again. There's Jack Clark out wide. I see the man in the middle. In Chaloff, can we find him? No, he did steal in at the near post in an earlier game this season to grab a hat-trick. Tielemans to Alexis McAllister. That's really well worked. And I think the less we say about the shot, the better. There's the final whistle. We survived the onslaught from Watford to earn W number one of the day. Let's head now into that simulated game against uh, West Ham and see if we can't make it too. They're very strong in that second half, Watford. One of the best performances from a side in a half without scoring I think I've ever seen in a game of Karima. Brighton beat Manchester United at the top of the table. That's going to throw the title fight wide open. Wide open. We are at risk of losing some players, so we'll have to make sure I offer some contracts around before the end of the month. But as you can see there, Spurs could go joint top if they win their game in hand. Their goal difference is plus 12. United's is plus 13. So to win, they will have to go up to at least plus 13 with their goal difference, Spurs. So win that game in hand, and Tottenham will uh, topple Manchester United at the top of the table. Things are getting interesting now with that defeat to Manchester United. Issued by Brighton. I would not have expected Brighton to beat Man United. They have had a couple of good seasons in this save, Brighton, but certainly uh, nowhere near as good as the starting 11 that Manchester United can put out week in, week out in this save. They are fourth, though, Brighton, so having a bit of a resurgence. They had a really good season four and a really good season five. Kind of fell off the wagon a little bit season six, but now in seven, back in the top four and fighting hard. Spurs lose their game in hand to Wolves. Who we play at the end of the episode. Next for us, though, is West Ham. Match has been rescheduled from the 1st of January to the 2nd. Or was it vice versa? It was the 2nd to the 1st because we have Forest again in the FA Cup away from home at the beginning of January then. It's going to be a busy month for January, too. We might end up splitting that into two episodes, especially if there's another FA Cup game or even a replay and then the subsequent next round FA Cup game to come in the month of January. Yuri Tiedemans gives us a 1-0 lead after six minutes. I'll be taking on board your guys' feedback from the previous few episodes when recording those January uh, videos to ensure we do the right thing in the transfer window with regards to potential departures and certain arrivals. Uh, we're 2-1 up now thanks to Jack Clark after uh, Hugo gave West Ham an equaliser after 13 minutes. Long lay with the third for us, and that should secure victory. Spurs winning 2-0 against Cardiff City, there, as you can see on the right-hand side. Notice the City having to come back late against Fulham to claim victory there. And that puts us top. Although Man United have a game in hand. That game in hand is against Crystal Palace, I believe. It seems on against Burnley on the 22nd. Our next game will be that one on the 26th against Nottingham Forest on Thursday. Obviously, it's a very busy uh, Christmas period as ever. We'll have a quick train, and then I'll see you in the game on that Thursday against Nottingham Forest away from home. Sai in goal for Forest. Dumfries, Vollert, Bornau and Dione at the back. Two holding, Maggiore and Lobos, with Appia, Carvalho and Matty Cash on the left. And then up top, 82-rated Bodu. They've played eight home games this season, Nottingham Forest. They've lost four. They've drawn four. They are yet to win at home this season. Ordinarily, that means that they're going to beat me in most scenarios, but their starting 11 is really poor. I mean, really poor. It's no surprise they haven't gotten any positive results this season and find themselves right down near the bottom of the table. They don't have the biggest of squads. They don't have the best of squads. And hopefully it shouldn't be too hard for us to uh, pick them apart and get ourselves a comfortable victory. But I shall try my hardest still. I can't take my foot off the gas because that's what happens. What happens when you do that, sorry, is especially on ultimate with more difficult sliders. You end up getting caught out by really good AI play. Exactly like that. Forest one, Sunderland nil. Told you that would happen. Chalov making the move down the line. We'll play him into the gap. Look for Harrison. It's a burst pass to the defender, which 
he can't do. And Lobos bring it away for Forrest. Bodu out there to Appia. He's got 99 acceleration, 99 agility, 99 sprint speed. So he's going to be quite difficult to play against. Touch that, please. Thank you, Matty Cash. That would be a goal kick for us. AI is so silly sometimes. He would have gotten himself a corner there if he'd have left it. Never mind. They're not so silly that they haven't got themselves a 1-0 lead here. So it's me that looks silly at the minute for saying, oh, they're so bad, they haven't got a win at home all season, and their squad looks terrible, and now they're 1-0 up against me, and I can't seem to create any chances on goal. 1-0 down still. Rafinha down the line looking for the run of Chalov, who turns well, drills it into the middle. Harrison with a finish, and Sai with a comfortable save. I think I had the space there to take an extra touch or two. It's frustrating. That was the most clear cut opportunity we've had so far to get an equaliser. Support play from his oh, yeah. Through the gap to Appiah. Can he clear his lines? All calls for a penalty. The referee thought about it, but didn't give anything. Saw the pass coming. Hear the crowd there. cheering or calling for it. Nice tackle, but it falls only to Carvalho. Here's Dione. Effort on target deflected. Well, Mendy nearly turned that into the back of his own net. Corner from Matty Cash to come in from this near side. It's a decent delivery. It's a header behind by Longley and Forrest with the opportunity from the other side now. To try and get themselves a second goal here. A 2-0 lead would really be remarkable. Bodu brings that down. Ah, and Vollert puts that over the stand. So much room for Jack Clark down here. And we'll turn inside. Oh, it's really nice football. Oh, but I can't finish it. Sai with a good stop. Brilliant opportunity. Oh, I thought I'd thrown that straight away. Never mind, I passed it straight away afterwards. Oh, trying to get the tackle in. I can't do anything against Nottingham Forest here. Whenever we do cut them apart, it's a great ball over the top to Matty Cash. Whenever we do cut them apart, the goalkeeper has had answers to everything. That's a good ball in. Furlan Mendy underneath it, though. No one further outfield to try and get possession though and we're on the back foot again oh lunge and a half from Jack Clark but still Appiah works it inside to Lobos who scored a second Forest 2 Sunderland 0 why is it always the way when sides are genuinely shit in every other game they play they're incredible against the user Forests have done nothing all season against anyone. They play against me and suddenly they're the best team in the league. Harrison, Tielemons, Jack Clark on the move. Jack Clark brings that down nicely. Jack Clark's really racing forward here to finish. Their keeper is unreal in this game so far. As is George Harrison apparently from corners. Jesus Christ, he cannot stop scoring right now. Forest 2, Sunderland 1. Just six minutes into the second half, we're back in it. This one will count towards his goal tally for the season. Off the underside of the bar. Nothing the man on the line could do about it this time either. Here's the third goal only of the Premier League season. That tally might be a little bit higher by the end of the year, the way he's been going recently. Sports. Rafinha to Chalov. Got players with me. Oh, Rafinha brings it down. Rafinha. No, off the post and it hits the keeper and falls to a Forest man. Well, we've certainly made the moves in this second half thus far to get ourselves back in the game. One goal down, very nearly two. On the hunt for at least one more still. If not two, if we can, to try and get all three points from this game. I said... I. Expecting a minimum of 10 from the month. Looks like at this rate, this might be the one that we drop the points in. But if we can turn it around, then I'd be absolutely thrilled, especially after that first half performance. Here's Jack Clark. Looks to shoulder well. Crosses nicely. Rafinha will knock that down horribly looking for Alexis McAllister. We've lost possession. Wonderful. Well. Drags back nicely. Like Around the corner now. there to Bodu. In towards the middle. Catch that. Why have you... Why? Just why? Why? Well. Makes no sense whatsoever. Clark forward into now Yearwood. Chalob making moves. But yeah. pass to George Harrison is so horribly under hit from Drew Yearwood that now we find ourselves on the back foot again. Dione. Nice tackle by Wan-Bissaka. But it will drop free to a Forest man. Carvalho. 
Oh, thankfully Luton held on to that one. We'd have gone 3-1 down here in the final few moments. I'd have been really pissed off. But Havertz off the bench here, trying to make an impact. Maybe earn himself a spot back in the starting 11. Tell off. George Harrison is the one making the moves, but the defender is in the way to deny him. Drew Yield wins the back, though. And around the corner here to Lyndon Gooch. This could be a very important finish for George Harrison again. Sunderland 2, Nottingham Forest 2. They are not going to get their first win at home of the season. Thank you very much. <sighs> Lyndon Gooch gets it into the middle. George Harrison scores another. And we are level at the city ground. Said our tar was targeting 10 points. And provided we can get the win against Wolves in the final game of the episode, we will be getting those 10 points. Yearwood, could we even maybe, if the referee lets play continue on here for the rest of this move, be getting all three in this game? Harrison is in the middle again. George Harrison gets tackled by Galdemez and they clear it away. It nearly happened. It very nearly happened. Up next for us, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Watson in goal again for Walls. Doherty, Colley, Denea, Bolly and Johnny at the back. Two, sorry, three in midfield. Diop, new signing Wendell and Morlanes with Dimata and Guri up top again. In the snow for win number three against the W's today. Can we do it this time around? It's, it's rare oh, there that, uh, to Rafinha it's into Harrison. But, uh, if the get back. Done so, well, Alexis, no off. I, I just don't know where to go. Yuri Tielemans, he's got a decent left foot as well as his right. Watson with a decent save. I almost find myself thinking about playing for corners at the minute with the way that George Harrison has been scoring of late. Molanis will switch this, but it's picked off well by Jack Clark, and we'll look for Tellov through that gap. Maybe George Harrison can score from open play. No, Tellov actually had worked the space quite nicely there, and perhaps should have just run on with him normally. Rafinha in there to McAllister. It's Tellov again through the gap, looking for Jack Clark, who's found well, let the shot off early, but can't keep control on it over the bar. Oh, picked off by Yuri Tielemans. It wouldn't quite drop free for me, otherwise George Harrison had a free run on goal. If I'd have played the through ball, Doherty in towards the middle. Long late away towards Tiedemons, who finds Chalov. I just have not been able to find a way past their back line at all in this game so far. So, so difficult to break down the five at the back. Alexis into George Harrison. Alexis again. Rafinha's out wide. He might just have been on side there. He wasn't, I don't think. Or is Wendell getting yellow card? No, the, the blow of the whistle was to Wendell being... Uh, booked. Rafinha was onside, but missing the target. So they're drawn out of position. Long way out of position. Now there's some space perhaps in the middle for them to exploit. If Lemon Longley hadn't tracked back expertly and gotten in the way. Alexis McAllister in there to Yuri Tielemans. Fire that forward to Jack Clark. And the overlap here is Ferland Mendy. Of what's coming up on EA Sports uh, for still you. so uh, many wall shirts in the way. Extra. Looking for George Sunderland. Harrison. Very Bit of space, space to let the shot away. Watson with a save. Early with Rafinha and Watson recovers. Expert work from the Wolves goalkeeper. Let's bring Kai Havertz on in a deeper role and see if we can't get that playmaker Oh, working in his favour. I'm going to bring Lyndon Gooch on for Jack Clark, who's had a quiet game, unfortunately. Rafinha nearly able to give us a 1-0 lead there, but still we look for the first goal with an hour played. Forward there to Chalov. Here is Jack Clark. I mean, he would had a quiet game so far. He could have one final part to play. Delivers a good ball in, and Willy Bolly heads the ball away. Uri brings it down. Tiedemans wins it back. He too, coming off momentarily. Oh, some poor pass. Looking for a man further forward. And Guri will build for Wolves. Oh, I nearly got to that. Jack Clark trying to chase after the ball. Doherty in there to Wendell. Here come Wolves now. And check Diop. I'm so done with conceding near post goals. I cannot wait for FIFA 20. Keepers just don't cover their near post properly. It just, the first goal of the match. He should never be scoring from there. He should never be scoring from there. So annoying. 
Well, we're going to have to come from behind against walls, as we did against forests. Only this time, we've got substantially less amount of time to do that. Kai Havertz, though, driving forward, trying to make an impact. Could do exactly that. Finds Lyndon Gooch. Oh, he's missed the target. Oh, Christ. Cannot score. Clean, yeah. Into Kai Havertz. Drops the shoulder nicely across there to McAllister. Just look at the amount of players in front of me, though. Oh, space to play Kai Havertz in from the deeper roll. Kai scores! Kai Havertz, Sunderland one, Wolves one. From the clutches of defeat, we may have snatched a draw for the second game in a row. To matter. That's a good cross away. Chalov picks up the loose ball. There is not time, really, to do much here unless the passes are super accurate and the finishes are too. Oh, and we're not going to get the chance to finish because the defenders cleared away well. To draw against Wolves in difficult weather conditions, a game that I really should have won. I should have won against Forest as well, but... Frustrations all round. And for Manchester United getting a one-all draw against West Ham. We're back down to third as things happen in the league. A draw against Forest and a draw against Wolves mean that we stay in third spot and don't challenge the top with four points off top again. Actually, it's topsy-turvy at the minute in the challenge for the title. But Liverpool and Chelsea are right there as well on 37 apiece. Brighton only on 33 now. They were all three on 31 earlier in the episode, but things haven't quite gone Brighton's way, despite winning against Manchester United earlier on in the month. It'll be West... West? It'll be Arsenal on the Wednesday, and then the following weekend we have Forest again in the Cup. Now, depending on how that Cup game goes, it will dictate whether we do or do not split the month of January into two. It's a big game against Arsenal actually. It could be very important in the long run of the season. I'm still unsure as to what to do in the transfer window. Tomori has gone to Juventus so we have a sizable amount of money now to be able to spend in this window on a new winger for the left hand side. It will be about £60 million or so. I am unsure what to do with Kai Havertz. Obviously George Harrison has been superb and he's now up at 89 rated. There have been some calls to have, well, this, in earlier episodes than the one where obviously George Harrison has now kicked on and started scoring a lot of goals. There have been some calls from McAllister to play there and Havertz to play there and still have Chalov up top. Chalov hasn't scored in a little while actually. So I'd be tempted to put Harrison up top, McAllister there and Havertz there and just sign a new winger. And that's something I might genuinely consider. Let me have a quick look and see what Chalov's goal scoring record is this season because he has been scoring a number of goals in other competitions. He's only got eight in 20 in the Premier League. It's not amazing. I mean, Jack Clark has seven in 20. Kai now has four in 18. Two in 19 for McAllister, although six assists. It's a tough one. I think I'm gonna spend all of my money on a winger. And then we'll figure out what to do with those central roles throughout the course of January. But that's going to be all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any further content. Obviously, uh, like I say, I'm going to be away for a few days uh, recording some FIFA 20 content. That is Ultimate Team though, not Career Mode. Career Mode will be coming on the 19th when EA Access becomes available on both PlayStation and Xbox One. But for now, we're going to continue this save. We'll continue that Aston Villa save on stream as well. But for now, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.